All right, we're at Western Iron Tech here today in our motorcycle lab, and what we're going to do is we're going to install a jet kit in a, uh, here's a 2003? Yes. VT750? DC. DC, okay, so we're going to talk about some of the techniques and things that we should be concerned about that and different options that we have in here. The one thing I'm, I'm kind of doing right now is cleaning up my work area, though, and making sure that I don't have any extra pieces or additional dirt or debris that I'm going to get inside the carburetor. Why make it uh, any harder than we need to, correct? Another thing we'll have to do is look up some of the OEM specifications on these set of carburetors here that are going to uh, help us identify what um, what we want to do with this bike. So Troy, what uh, tell us a little bit about the bike. You did some modifications to it? Yes, I put a Vance and Hines exhaust system and I'm just hoping to get more power out of the bike through using a jet kit. Okay, so one thing I'm going to need uh, right away is the work order. So uh, somebody could grab the work order on it so we can document what we want to try and do. You guys, the big thing about jet kits is we're going to have some um, questions for the customer on what exactly they changed. Grabbing a jet kit and saying, oh, I just have to go ahead and set it to these settings, you're going to end up doing stuff you don't want to do. So. We want to know, is there uh, an aftermarket air filter on the motorcycle and things like that. Now, I did print these off for you guys in uh, class today. I've got them in the class. Remember that uh, questionnaire that I told you guys about? I, I won't need this because I'm not having any drivability complaints. This is a perfectly good working motorcycle that we're just modifying due to... Uh, um, alterations with the exhaust system. Is it stock air filters? Yes. Okay, so that's important. In fact, are you planning on keeping stock air filter? Yeah. Okay, and honestly on the 750 and on these Hondas, we've had pretty good luck with the OEM filters that they're a really good uh, filter. So, uh, this troubleshoot guide is just priceless though if uh, you look through that if you're having any problems. So, first thing I want to do is I want to take a look at my kit here. I am uh, fully intending to steal his stickers. That's what most of us do with uh, accessories put on our refrigerators. I've already given them to him right now, so uh, I don't uh, walk away with them. <clears throat> so, uh, like anything we do, we should inventory the parts list in the kit so that we don't uh, get halfway through it and find out something's missing here. So, you'll notice here we got a different selection of main jets in here. 100, 102, 104, 106, 108. Now, this is a two-cylinder. So why in the world would we not have quantities of two? Remember talking about this in class? It's still only to enough for front to rear. Yeah. They're different for front to rear. That's right, Connor. You so we have back because it's hotter. Right. So we're going to have actually different genning from front to rear. So I'm not concerned about that. That would be normal. So we take a look. Have you ever inventoried any of this yourself? No. Okay. We've got a couple of adjustable needles. Isn't this what we said we're really paying for in the DinoJet kit? Absolutely. I mean, that's where all the, the money really is. Another thing in here is some uh, slide springs. So we want to take a look at, I'm trying to be careful with these. I do not want to uh, intentionally uh, damage them or bend them. They've kind of intertwined themselves here. Okay. So we got uh, slide springs going to be possibly different lengths or whatnot. I'm going to take a look. These are the same, so I'm not worried about that. Then on this vehicle here, have these carbs ever been off before? No. I don't know. And uh, this drill bit and this screw are really, really important here. What I'm looking for, yeah, somebody's been in here before. Okay. And if you could kind of zoom in right here. I found the fuel mixture screw on it, and what did I expect to see on that? Plug. The what do we call Welch that plug? plug. The Welch plug. plug. Watch one of our other YouTube videos for our subscribers out there, and we have a demonstration on how to remove this. But that is definitely what this uh, uh, this uh, drill bit is usually for. If there's two drill bits, it might be that we're going to drill the slide out, but we'll talk about that more when we get in the direction. So these two guys we're not going to need. Another thing that we have is a couple of E-clips and some shims or washers so that we can adjust these needles when we get to that point. And then we've still got some cleaning and stuff to do. So I got 100, itemize these out, 104, 102, 6 and 8. So our jet kit is complete. We don't have anything that's going to cause us any problems or run into any uh, deficiencies as we move along here. So the next step that we're going to do is we're going to figure out between our service order and our customer what exactly it is that he intends to do. This jet kit 
you always want to, have you guys heard like they have a stage one or stage three or stage seven? So stage one is typically a bike that's going to use a stock air box. That does not mean stock air filter. That means that you're going to use the type of bracketry and, and box that the air filters are housed in. When you go to individual filters, that is your stage three and everything changes there. And we'll talk a lot more about that in class about the benefits. Um, on this one, it says it's a stage one, so I'm happy about that. It says it's the right year and model. We're good there. And it says here that it can use with stock, air filters, or an aftermarket exhaust system. So now we're going to look into the directions here. And we're going to, and you guys will pass this around. You guys can take a look at it. And it's going to give me some choices. It's going to tell me to remove the vacuum slides from the carburetor so we can get those out. It says remove all stock needle spacers. Listen to this. It says noting the order of order of assembly okay and then they give us some generic instructions here to show how this should be assembled <clears throat> here's the problem you guys are going to run into what if the last guy put it together wrong are you with me on that mm -hmm. so what are we going to really rely on for this order what's our best friend manual manual and what's something that's even a little bit easier and quick parts, and easy to grab fish. onto parts fish okay we need them both because we want to check our float height and we're going to do things that they're telling us we don't have to do because these instructions are wrote for a perfectly fine running vehicle that does not have any problems float height is already supposed to be correct the order of all these parts is supposed to be correct is everybody clear on that a lot of people install a jet kit thinking that they're going to fix problems they might accidentally fix some stuff as they take the carbs apart, but dyno jet kits are not meant to uh, fix motorcycles with broken parts. Is everybody crystal clear on that? They get a lot of calls where people are like, hey, something's not right or it's not working. That's why they haven't felt that questionnaire just to find out that that was already an existing problem. So let's take a look at this. It tells us that we're going to put the needles on groove three, and it says we're going to install the dyno jet slide spring in place of the stock spring. So they're controlling the speed of that slide. And then it says here, after installing slides, be sure to check that the, the slides move free. Remove the stock jets and replace with the dyno jet main jets. If you are using a stock, listen to this, if you're using a stock exhaust or an aftermarket exhaust with baffles, use the uh, 102 jets in the front or the right carburetor and use the main jet, the 106 in the rear be sure that the jet you're changing is the main jet. So if they're just having a little bit of caution. If you don't know what you're doing, you need to go ahead and do that. It says here, if you are using, uh, let's see, uh, use the 102 main jets in the front, I'm sorry, and use the 104 in the rear with baffles. Let's see, 102, 102 and 104, I'm sorry, for stock. If you're using wide open exhaust without baffles, use a 104 and a 106. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and uh, start to disassemble this carburetor. And I got a couple tips on that that I definitely recommend. And you guys remember this from classes. What should I do to all of these mounting screws? It's going to come off loosen it first. I'm just going to crack them loose. Now there's another thing here that I'm going to take advantage of real quick. And that is to take a real quick photo. This, uh, this bike is looking really good as far as its brackets and... Okay. Do you see this hose clamp here? Yeah. Okay. Yep. So on this, I, do I want to get that back in that right position? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. So Troy, what we'll do here, you got your phone on you? Yeah. Why don't you take a picture of your own carbs real quick? Now, you guys at home have to be careful because you don't know if the last person uh, put it together wrong, but in this case, we know a little bit of history about the bike, and it looks to be extremely correct in stock. We'll, we'll back that up with the service manual, but now's our chance to uh, to make note of that. So, let's switch off. Now, I, I can't stress this enough that I really need to be careful where I'm setting this and, and putting pressure on here so that I'm not going to break something. Now, do you see how I'm really rocking that back and forth? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. As much as this screwdriver is um, sized for this, it still is a little bit off. So if I were just to grab onto that and start turning it, what would I do this the uh, screw? Strip it out. Absolutely. <coughs> you guys get the idea what I'm doing here? That baby is stuck. Okay. If you're struggling, you guys at home hadn't seen these yet. The snap-on set of pliers, 
you can zoom in on that, that 5 ACP, this is absolutely your best friend. I just about thought I was going to have to grab a hold of this one, but I'm going to go ahead and model it and demonstrate it as well. So I would grab onto this screw and crank this as tight as I can, and I will be able to break that free. Remember me talking about how it has that really nice rounded head to be able to get into tight places? So definitely going to be one of your best friends. Troy, why don't you grab a couple more photos here so that we can see these clamps. You can just do it from, uh, from that side. Good? Okay. Good. All right. Did you guys think I was going to strip that? Did you see uh, it looked like it was going, going to? Close. It was pretty close, wasn't it? Yeah. Notice when I do this, I really support with my body instead of trying to work from here. That's one thing that's going to cause it to slip or, or strip more. Every time I move it around, I'm rechecking what I'm doing with these cables, aren't I? That one just about didn't want to go to. How many of you guys are using your screwdrivers like this? Really being intentionally careful. You guys remember from that class we did last semester that we can have a lot of problem prevention by just taking some time to do this. That one's not coming, so I am going to model this. Can you get in there? Gripped it nice and easy. Now watch this. That that easy. So that's be real beneficial. Okay. All right. We're going to go ahead. We got the carburetors cleaned up right now, so we're going to go ahead and uh, take these uh, take these apart. One thing I want to recommend is I always do the CV uh, side first. Why is that, guys? A little bit of review. Because the spring. No. Because we get a nice flat surface surface to work from. I don't want to be bending or have a problem on the uh, flow height, right? Tell them we're videotaping, please. So the other thing I need to do right now is I need to build a relationship into which carb is the front and which one is the rear. Okay? Notice here from our parts washer, we got a bunch of ultrasonic fluid in here. That's another good reason that we go ahead and uh, clean these right away. So, with uh, with this in mind, Troy, now that you're back in, uh, back here, let's take a look and if, see if you can help us out on which one of these is the front and which one is the rear carburetor. I think your throttle were on the your throttles were on the left side of the vehicle when you disassembled them. Kind of oversaw yes. that. Okay. So if we look at this, then. This manifold's going forward, right? Are you with me? Okay. For, and then this one's going backwards for how it's orientated because we have air boxes in here that are going to sit up in here, correct? So everything I do with this carburetor needs to be a front carburetor. Does that make sense? Because, yeah. guys, why do we say it's so important on this? We just said this a little bit ago. Jets, the jets in the front are smaller than the jets, jets are, in the back. The jets are different. Yeah. So, being so I don't want to take a chance of screwing that up, I'm going to go ahead and uh, just make myself a little reference here that could be cleaned off. Do, if, if you take and mark up with a paint marker or something else, don't you guys think it's a good idea to, uh, let's see if I did that right. Don't you think it's a good idea to get rid of your marks when you hand the carbs back to the customer and put them on the bike? Yeah. We don't want to see paint marker stuff on here, but for right now, this is going to be really beneficial to uh, have our organization here. Does that make sense? All right. All right, we'll keep going along here. Now, when you go take these slides off, you're going to want to make sure and hold your finger on here because of the spring that's underneath. And we switch to, uh, since we cracked these loose, we switch to this gun just to make things faster, right? Since I have my marker out, I'm going to take advantage of something else here. I'm going to go ahead and mark where that tab goes. The one 
bolt with the retainer tab on there and whatnot for the hose. I'm just, just thawing that while I was doing that. And what I did is I started to see a relationship as I was taking the cap off to where the ear is on the slide. So I was just kind of comparing the two. Now one thing about this, I want to kind of treat it somewhat fragile. When I take this off, we're going to go ahead and stretch these and make sure that there's no tears. We'll take and hold them to the light and make sure that I can't see any light through them. If there's any problems whatsoever with these, you have to uh, uh, replace them. There's no JB weld, there's no epoxy, there's no silicone. Think of this thing sliding up and down in there. We don't have any options. Why don't you guys come around and get in here a little bit closer so you don't have to stand in the back there and miss out. Um, all right, so like I said, now that I got my slides off here, I can feel good about working through the bottom of the carburetor here. And uh, some people would say, well, are we going to just take the chokes off? If there's no problem, especially on a vehicle like this, um, we can take them off and uh, clean under here. But did we say we ever really find much going on under here? No. No. So we'll do it just for preventative maintenance, but we don't normally worry about it all the time. So I'm going to use my marker and take advantage of a, another opportunity here. Now, since I flipped the carburetor, I want you to notice something. Let's pay attention how I did that again. I was in this direction, right? Okay, so I've started my piles here. As I flip this, did I rotate the bowls around? No. Nope. If you take and take your inline four cylinders or anything else and you flip them like this, that's where you're really going to get into trouble. So you guys want to make sure that you stay consistent on your left and right sides. A lot of times these make good little parts holders, don't they? Okay, you guys are going to see this goes pretty quick from here. This jet kit does not require any drilling or any passages other than the Welch plug, which is already done on this bike. Okay. So I'm always a little careful taking this off. And now one of the first things I'm going to do on these, a lot of these bikes, uh, the O-ring uh, type gasket, if it's not too old, it's going to be pretty good. But what I'm trying to do is I'm making sure that the O-ring sits above this edge. If I can take the screwdriver or something, a straight edge across there, and it sits below there, it's never going to seal. It has, there's zero value in me putting it back together. So for the purposes of the camera here, I'm going to try and uh, flip this around. We go ahead and focus down in here. Okay. So we're going to start to disassemble, and even though the jet kit doesn't tell us to do it, we're going to go ahead and take all this out so that we can check and inspect things. Once again, this vehicle has no complaints. And then another thing I'm going to do is I start to see which jets are removable. We're going to take them out even though they, they, we don't have to because we're going to make sure that the passages are clear all the way through. Why would we want to gamble on that, right? Is there a chance too when we're uh, opening this body up that we could bring a piece of dirt into a jet? Yes. Absolutely. It's our slow speed jet or a pilot jet. This is our main jet. This particular bike happens to be a 7 millimeter here on this emulsion tube. You guys saw 8 millimeter on some other ones, right? Yep. Okay, and this is a non removable uh, needle jet that's inside of there, so we should be able to uh, move forward. The one thing I'm going to do though, I'm going to take apart the, the seat. Okay, so we already took the needle out. I'm going to take the seat off. And anybody remember why? What's that? If there's a screen in there. Okay, so what are we going to do with those screens? Take it, take it out. Throw it away. Throw it away. It's up to Troy here. This is his motorcycle. So that is going to be up to him. Uh, we're going to have a good, do you have a good clean fuel filter on the bike? Yeah. Okay, so you don't have to do this. It's just something like I said. Now check those out. Are we focused about right here? Get nice and tight. Okay. Um, so like I said, if I wanted to just go ahead and snap this off, I could do that. So that's who we have to him. The problem is if these get plugged, we gotta do complete carb disassemble to get to them. Were these carbs very easy to get off? They were hard. A little time consuming, right? So we're gonna let you decide what you want to do there. Another thing that we like to do, we might as well show on the video, is we like to take a Q-tip with some uh, aluminum polish or something. We'll go in here on the seat and get it really good and cleaned up, removing any traces of varnish or anything else that's in there. That's a nice little trick. So uh, another thing to think about here on this one, it looked like there wasn't a washer, but I know there's got to be one. So there's going to be a crush washer underneath this seat. 
that uh, is going to secure the fuel from not getting past the threats. Pretty important. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be either copper or aluminum. So if I would have just got my blowgun out and started going crazy, am I going to make a mess? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, I'm going to. So remember, I, I got to be so careful not to flip this around. So I'm going to go ahead and do the other side here. I'm also going to make a reference on this one. Where that's gonna go, so I don't have to think so hard, right? What you guys are gonna see it's different on this is what we're gonna do with the needles and how we get the needles out of the slides here. So we're just a, a second away from this. What did I need to do here? It's in pretty good shape. And the carbs are really clean here. So this is one of those deals that some Honda technicians or whatnot would probably say, don't you dare take those screens out. They're doing their job. Uh, in this case, uh, they are doing a good job. You maintain this vehicle pretty good, Troy? You bet. Do <laughs> <laughs> you see how much caution that I'm using here, guys? Yeah. And the reason is, I don't want to break these ears off. So that's what I'd be really concerned about. What, you know, what would this look like if you put a jet kit in and didn't take the time to check these out? And it could be dirty underneath there. Should, then you're going to end up, flow. you're going to put these recommended jets in and then they're going to be too small, right? If they're dirty or restricted, you'd be having a, a real trouble trying to tune this thing. And when you ask yourself, if you got a stock motorcycle and you're having to put jets in that are four or five times larger, wouldn't you be concerned that, hey, something's not right about this, Something, something's goofy, I probably have a, a, a fuel problem of getting it there. And a lot of times what we'll do is we'll just not use the stock motorcycle's gas tank, we'll actually switch to uh, our auxiliary tank, and then if the problem were still there, that we would know it was somewhere within the fuel delivery system of the bike itself. So. All right, we're good and gutted here, and we have uh, two other screws that we need to get out, and that's the fuel mixture screws here. There's one on each side of the carburetor here. Can you zoom in on and see these in here? You guys will have to help me out. I can't obviously see what's going on. I'll try to stay focused right in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to record what they were so I could put them on my work work. Does that make sense? So you guys have seen me take these out so far, but you haven't seen me... Uh, be real intentional about trying to see what they were set at. So maybe this one will fit in here. Yep, I got a large enough hole. So I'm going to wait until the slot slides down. Find it here. It's a little hard to do from uh, this angle. And this screwdriver is just a little too big. So I'm going to be careful here to count there. I'm going to count my flats here. So I'm going to screw it in. There's half, one, half, two, half, three, and a half, almost four, just, just shy of four turns. Remember we said someone's been in here? Yeah. Okay, I bet this thing idled nice. You bet it. <laughs> <laughs> this mileage might have been off a little bit. Probably didn't need a lot of choke either. Okay, no. so this uh, is... Uh, three and uh, let's say seven eighths. Okay, so Troy, why don't you get that road on your work order and that's the front carburetor. Why do I want to document that? Put it back how it was. Well, we're not going to with the jet kit. We're going to fix it, but it shows a proof of all the previous years that the vehicle has been been running to what was going on. Right? If my customer, now if I go from here, and this was three and five eighths, and my customer says, man, my spark plugs have been fouling or having problems, is that a clue? That's a rich condition. So we definitely want to have that evidence on there. So we'll switch now to the, uh, the other carburetor here. Wash Be very on. careful. It all came off in one shot. Okay. So, all right. Half, one, half, two, half, three, half, four, in a quarter, four and a quarter. Why did class tell the tell the video there what we said about having them that large? The spring isn't as 
uh, is tight in there and the uh, screw can screw out further. Right. Possibly fall out. And yeah, possibly fall out. And you got fuel everywhere. So this one we got, so what they're talking about is the tension on this spring right here. So focus in here. If I have this threaded all the way out, there's not much seating going on. So that's what we're talking about. So like we said, really over, you know, you, uh, really over three and a half, you're really starting to be concerned. Now I've got an, uh, an O-ring that's stuck down in here. Hopefully it's in here. Can I have a flashlight, please? And it is in place, so that's good news. And this little hook tool here, out of like your typical uh, four-piece hook set, or excuse, uh, excuse me, pick sets, these are great for uh, getting down in here and then basically just spiraling it up. Okay, finally got that out. A lot of caution on that. Now I still need to inspect these parts, so uh, I'm going to use some caution on that um, before I just uh, worry so much about assembling it. But what I really want to focus on is getting the needle out of this slide. So I'll just start with this rear cylinder one. And can you focus in here? Can you see that star inside of there? So these are pretty cool from Honda. There's nothing to it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna depress it and then turn it. What happens if I don't depress it? It's not gonna work. It's plastic and it's gonna shear really easy, okay? Now, did you see how easy I did that? That's all there is to it. So you guys have already seen this before of this needle spring, right? Mm -hmm. Are you with me? So on this, slide this down. What am I looking for right now? Spacers. Yeah, potential spacers, okay? And I'm seeing nothing in here, okay? All I'm seeing is the, the needle itself and then my retainer, and I'm a little concerned about that to be honest with you. I was really expecting to see something in there. So real quickly, I'm gonna go ahead and do the other one here. See how quick and easy that is. And I'm not seeing any spacers or anything here. Uh, guys, I gotta tell you this right now, I'm not gonna trust this. I'm gonna go to the microfish because you got your iPad with your manual. Why don't you go ahead, where's your iPad? Oh, you already got it pulled out, sweet. And that is correct. So that is stock, but it, I, if I were to trust that and I was missing something, would it throw the jet kit off? Mm -hmm. yes. Okay, now one thing I want you guys to notice is I want you to notice the stock spring out of the motorcycle and notice the new one. Okay, so this was really holding that down there a lot tighter, okay? So with this new spring, what's gonna happen with that? It's gonna move back and forth easier. Faster. Faster. Faster be the good word. Is his mid-range acceleration gonna rock? Yep. Yes. Yeah, so remember what you're paying for in the jet kit. That is something that's super important here, okay? So now that uh, everything's out of the way here, I'm gonna go ahead and dust it off, make sure I'm away from the table. Everybody understand? And what I'm doing is gonna feel the outlet passages, verifying and looking to see that the fuel is actually shooting out. or JB80 shooting out of that. Just do the same thing here. Life is good. Okay, so as far as the carbs themselves, they should be ready to go and ready to install. And coming off the bench like that, I just about, uh, uh, well, I definitely had to make myself think on which one was the front and rear. Those little indicators I made pretty handy right now. Okay, super handy. So we'll do the slides last, and we're just going to focus on the components of the uh, of the jet kit itself. So we said that we were going to stick with uh, the stocks, uh, the more of the stock exhaust settings because we've had a lot of luck with that. And we ha if we have to change it, we have to change it. So with uh, with this, we're going to use. Uh, and the other thing I want to compare is we've got to remember that the stock jet in the Dyno jet kit 
are not just because the numbers are close does not mean that they use the same measuring system okay so if you look at this the stock rear jet on this one I believe is a 108 and they're telling us to actually put a 102 in it you remember talking about that in class where I said a lot of people go well I'm putting a jet cam putting a smaller that doesn't mean we're putting a smaller jet it means we're putting a dyno jet 102 in it everybody clear on that so why don't you do me a favor, Troy, this is your bike here, why don't you get me the 102 and the 104. Well, anybody ever made a chart comparing all the different companies? There has. There's one I'm going to get you guys that somebody took the time, not between all the companies, but they did like Dinojet and uh, Makuni. Let's see here. So you're doing stock air filters, so I need the 104 in the rear, the 102 in the front. Makes sense? Is there a chance I'm going to be wrong on this? Yeah, yeah. yeah, there is. So we will find out. And if we have to, then we have to switch those jets. But that's part of uh, being a mechanic. So let's inspect my emulsion tubes. Because they're recommendations. So like I said, from a lot of past experience, we've had a lot of luck actually going down a size and getting that air-fuel ratio where we want it versus doing the safe, you know, uh, fatter jets in there. And it, why have to take it apart twice since we've had so much luck doing it the other way? So that is why. So I'm gonna, I keep checking myself, right? Because this uh, dual carb here. I'm gonna also make sure my emulsion tube is still in there, my needle jet. I'm gonna thread this in just nice and light. Now we went ahead and looked up the specs here for the pilot jets and I printed them off. We look at that paper I printed off that brand just laid down there and see what the stock jet's supposed to be. going to put the new jet sizes down. Verify that these are snug. What happens if you don't get these tight? The leak. The leak is the beginning of your problem. What do they ultimately end up doing? Yeah, we'll Falling down into the adjusting. Um. Okay, so on this needle, look down here. What do we say we always want to do to the spring? Make sure push it. Yep, the float pin. We want to make sure that that functions. If that's sticking, it's gonna, it's definitely gonna be a problem. So the other thing we're gonna take a look at is the float height. And you can see the tab right here. That's adjustable. That's what we bend in and out to set this float height. So I'm gonna grab this. Okay. Now, would this be easy to strip? Yes. Okay. Would be easy to break. Just make this easy to let this fall down in there. What holds the float pin in? The bowl itself. So what I'm going to be doing is checking the float height. Then what I really want you to do is, you guys watch the video for Brandis there too to make sure. I want a really good focused um, shot of this, uh, this area right here. And is it good? Yep. All right. What I'm going to do here is we're going to set this float height. And you notice how this just hinges around here? As I set this down, it finds a resting point. If I go further, it wants to drop that pin. So per Honda, per the service manual, it tells us, and this is every single one that's out there, they tell exactly how to do this, we want this just resting on here. And then what they say is from the surface to the top, we want to be at seven millimeters. So we use a digital caliper, veneer caliper, excuse me. And I'm going to go ahead, zero this out. I'm going to set it to seven millimeters. You see that on there? And then I'm going to measure where this float height is actually at. And just touch. And his float height is a little bit high, isn't it? Yep. Okay, so according to Honda, if this is, he's actually more closer around nine millimeters. What would that, what would that mean? Actually, maybe eight run lean. It's going to run a little bit lean. So he wants to have performance out of this, so we're going to go ahead and adjust this. Now, guys, what do you think of that? So now we're at our good 7 millimeter, and then we can leave that for uh, when we come back to do the other the other carb there. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, I don't know if you guys paid attention to when I took this apart. I want to be intentional in the direction of the clamp. So this clamp was facing like this to be able to go over. So I paid attention to that. Now we'd have choice pictures to go ahead and prove that too, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yes. In one of our other videos, we show bench testing. 
you guys, uh, we won't add that to this video just to go ahead and shorten it up, but take and uh, watch other videos on how to actually bench test the carburetors. We're going to put these in their normal operating position, uh, plug fuel to it, and make sure that there's no leaks before it goes on the vehicle. Why do we do that? Because you wouldn't know right. about the leak before you put it in. There you go. You got to go through all work. the problems of pulling it back out again. Right, exactly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish this one carburetor here, and you guys can understand it's a duplication of the other one. We would bench test the carbs and then uh, put them on the bike. So we're going to switch gears here. Get, treat these like they're made of gold. They're really fragile. I'm going to go ahead and take out one of my needles here. I'm going to take out my washers and clips. And I'll be able to show you guys some tricks here. We want to make sure we get a good close-up of the camera angle of this. So I got one of each. Now, per the directions from DinoJet, is we could see, let's get a just stay focused in this area. We could see here that they're going to tell us the order of assembly. We have the needle, the clip, and where's the washer go? On top. Above. Does so anybody know what that washer's for? This frame from, pushing off and pushing from digging into it, right? Yeah. So here's the way I like to do this. <clears throat> Let's see if, and I've got to count these out. So zoomed in. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is clip it in place. So that, that look good? Mm -hmm. So now make sure you do this, rotate it. If that clip isn't in there, it falls off, where's the needle go when the slide lifts? Back up then. Straight down, straight down, down and plugs, plugs it. it off and you'll have no acceleration. It's going to be a bad day. Okay, so that's all there is to that. Then we put our washer on here and now we're going to go ahead and simply duplicate um, our slide here. I want to talk about this for other jet kits. And you guys, you're pretty new on CVs and the videos haven't done a lot of this. In, uh, underneath here, we have a drilled hole. Okay, so that is what we call our lift hole. Now, remember in the videos we were watching how they talked about the pressure difference below the slide and above the slide? Mm -hmm. When we lower the pressure above the slide, it allows it to lift because the pressure underneath it is more and that's what causes the rise on this. Mm -hmm. Some jet kits will tell you to take, where's my plastic case? Some of these jet kits will actually come with a side, well, they'll come with two drill bits. And one of the drill bits, you have to make sure and read what size they are because one is for drilling out the welch plug and the other one is for drilling out this lift hole. And there's one bike that I could think of in my career, the GSX-R1100 or 750s, I don't remember, like uh, early 90s or something. They actually had you drill these out, tap them, and put smaller holes in. They had found out through their engineering that that actually worked better, so you actually put little plugs in. Now, some will have dual holes or whatnot, so when they talk about drilling a lift hole in a jet kit, this is what we're talking about on a CV carburetor, okay? All right. Okay, so I gotta check my work though, so I'm pull this back out and see how I can spring that around. If I had missed that spring, that's what I'd be worried about. This would actually be jammed up or it would actually be side loading it like that. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So obviously uh, one other thing I want to point out is on this particular slide, do you guys see how it has a directional tab? Mm -hmm. Since it doesn't have, uh, it's a perfectly round slide and that's what's going to pinch this and then uh, put it in the proper place. The other thing you notice the slide doesn't have a cutaway. Yeah. There's nothing on there too, so there's not anything we can screw up on this. But when I put this down, now here's the whole trick to doing the vacuum slides. Okay, listen to me on this. When you put all your slides in, you want to fold the vacuum slide down. Okay, and then, guys, here's the thing. The manual doesn't tell this. Okay, so if you do this the other way, it's a really good chance you're going to pinch it like we talked about in class. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to need to move this carb up because I need to come through here and hold with my finger, is I want to be able to take this rubber groove and lip here, and I'm going to seal this properly around the brass plug on this one. I'm going to stick my finger in here, and I want to get this to where I'm holding it up. I don't want this to move down. If this moves down, that's why, like I said, it's going to pop out of here. Now I'm going to take my new spring, my shorter one here, Get it in place, there's nothing special about it. The cap itself, see how it has the re, uh, the detent right there? Yeah. Where it's, excuse me, where it's casted out. And we see the matching one that's gonna go right here. So when I go to put this on, this spring has to cradle right there. I don't know how many of these I've taken off and the springs were like this. Yeah, that's not a, not a good day, it's not how it's designed. So now I'm gonna take and preload it. Are you with me on this? Yeah. 
and I'm going to set this down and it will lock in place and now watch this. Okay, life is good. Okay, if I try and do it the other way, it will usually push the rubber out or fold it inside and it'll pinch. So like every single one of these, this is where I have the best luck and I go ahead and test fit it. I'm gonna, you can see here that the slide fully retracts and I'm not having any issues or anything with the slide itself. What I'm trying to do is change the pressure, pressure difference underneath the slide and above and I'll go ahead and do that again real lightly. Okay, I don't want to sit and crank at 100 PSI, but look at how slow and little of PSI will lift that. Okay, nice, good, smooth action. So this carburetor on, on this side is done and good to go, and then we would go ahead and duplicate this over on this side. Uh, on our air fuel mixture screw, I always go steel washer, then the O-ring. Are we zoomed in? Okay, so spring, steel washer, O-ring. This one here, we're going to go right here, we're on the fuel side, and I bottom it all the way out, right? Yes. Now that three and a half, three and seven eighths and four doesn't seem so bad when we're starting at three, does it? No. Okay, so half, one, half, two, half. Three. And I'm done. And I would uh, set that back on the bike. So, well, I'm going to work with Troy to finish up this other carb here so he can do this one himself.